Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I am Danny, otherwise known as The Grow Girl. Thanks for tuning in today or for catching me if you're new. In today's video, I just wanted to show you guys my top products and tools to start your own backyard garden. So it's December and there's really not a whole lot going on outside in the garden other than just keeping everything alive. So I'm creating a series of videos on kind of some background information and things to get started to build your own backyard garden. So last week's video, if you didn't check it out, I will link it below. It was showing you guys my top books to start your own backyard garden. And then my last video is going to just be some general information on how to get started with a backyard garden. If this is something that you have wanted to do or you're wanting to expand, I'm going to go into some things that you want to think about, some things that have worked for me or not worked for me, just to give you some ideas and motivation and inspiration for 2021. As always, if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you here every week with me. And just remember, if you want more day-to-day -day gardening inspiration tips and just pretty pictures, you can check me out on Instagram at the Girl Girl Texas. So I hope you like this video and let's check everything out. Okay, so here I just kind of wanted to show you where we keep everything is here in our garage as many suburban families do. Um, here in the corner we have kind of the bigger tools, so stuff I use in the garden as well as stuff my husband uses to take care of the lawn. We do everything for our landscaping ourselves, other than the initial build of the landscaping and we both enjoy being outside and taking care of everything and then I also keep all of my gardening stuff here on the shelf. I just have it kind of organized in these bins and on the shelf so it's easy to kind of grab but keep tidy and out of the way. Okay, so let's first talk about some common tools that you would want to use around the garden. Everything I'm going to show you in this video is linked below or similar items. And the first one is this big gorilla cart, which is super handy for carting things back and forth. It's like a modern day wheelbarrow. And then these are the uh, biggest tools that I use. I have the 14 tine bow rake, which comes in really handy for mixing stuff in the beds, the poly steel rake, which is used in the lawn and in the beds, and then a big shovel. Um, just to move dirt around and transplant everything and then you also want to have a hand trowel for doing like your smaller up close gardening this one I got at Target super cute it still works perfect you don't have to spend a ton of money on tools and then you have some pruning shears which work really good for removing branches off of shrubs and then here I have some bamboo twine and velcro and then frost blanket and bird netting. All of these are really helpful out in the garden at different times of the year. So here you can see my frost blankets. This video was actually taken last week when we had a bad frost come in. And I, pretty much in the Houston area, we use it probably a few times a year. It doesn't get exceptionally cold, but you know, a frost will kill a lot of the vegetables and flowers. So I got these frost blankets off of Amazon and I love them. They add about five to eight, degrees of warmth to the area which is just enough for us because it barely gets right below freezing so as you can see here I'm just uncovering my strawberry bed and you can see everything looks great and definitely kept all the strawberries warm and kept them from freezing The next things you want to think about is what you're going to wear in the garden to be comfortable and useful. You definitely need one or multiple good pairs of gloves, maybe some with rubber or leather for dealing with things with thorns. And then I like these little knee pads in case I need to kneel down on the beds, they kind of protect my knees. A really good pair of boots. These are just cheap ones I got at Academy and they work great. And then I really like my little garden stool here. I got this one at Target, but I'm gonna link below a similar one on Amazon. But I like that it has, it's a, it has handles so I can carry it around. It can fold up super quick and then it has little pockets to carry stuff, but it's really handy to use that so you're not bending over all the time. 
Okay, the last thing that I wanted to show you is just a lot of the different products that I use in the garden. So the first thing would definitely be the raised beds. I got these off of Amazon. They're galvanized metal, so they don't heat up in our hot Texas uh, summers, which is really helpful. They were very easy to put together. They're relatively affordable and they're going to last longer than wood. If you're going to build a wood bed, you probably want to use cedar. Um, but eventually, you know, after a few years, it's, it's usually going to rot. So I like the metal because they'll last longer. And like I said, they were pretty affordable. So something else you may want to consider getting is a grow light in case you want to grow anything indoors or start seeds indoors. This is vital. Okay, let's go through some of the top products that I use. Um, first up is the Scott Super Bloom, which is a really great all-purpose fertilizer for just flowers. I probably fertilize with this every two weeks. And one tip for looking at the fertilizer, um, you wanna look at the nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus ratio. This is gonna be listed on any fertilizer. And you wanna think about what you're trying to use your fertilizer for. Um, and what your, you know, what your vegetable or what your plant, your flower is trying to do. Um, a really easy way to remember how each component helps is either head, arms, legs, or leaves, flowers, fruit, and roots. So for instance, uh, leafy greens like a lot of nitrogen because the greens is the part that we're eating and that promotes good uh, leaf growth. However, uh, carrots or root vegetables need more phosphorus slash potassium and not as much nitrogen or very little nitrogen. So pay attention to this. You can always Google or look up some really good recommendations for products or see some of the stuff I have used here that has helped me out. And then this is the Dr. Earth Acid Lover fertilizer for azaleas. I'm in the south. I have azalea bushes and this works great. And then I also use this Dr. Earth Flower Girl um, Bloom bus Booster. And I usually add this to other flowers right when I plant them, especially like my roses. Then I have this bone meal and I put this down when I plant bulbs. The all general fertilizer that I use in my vegetable beds is this MicroLife multi-purpose fertilizer. I put this down whenever I plant a new vegetable and it's worked out really great so far. And then I also use this Ocean Harvest foliar feed um, for the plants themselves. Just kind of spray it on them once every couple of weeks just to give them a little extra nutrient boost. And then this Job's Organics Vegetable Tomato Fertilizer has been really great for the tomatoes, the peppers, the zucchini that I've planted. They have loved this fertilizer. And then I use this uh, berry plant food here um, for my strawberries. You can also use it for raspberries and blueberries and blackberries. And then the Eco Scrap Citrus Plant Food I use for my lime tree. to grow plant I use this fertilizer for my carrots just because it has a higher ratio of potassium and phosphorus in it and then this is a really good seed starting mix the Jiffy organic seed starting mix now you got to think about pests in your garden so neem oil is a really good organic pesticide to keep um, for a lot of different bugs, especially aphids. And then I also use the uh, dead bug solution for pretty much anything. Uh, the only thing it doesn't work on it I have found is fire ants, but everything else it's great. 
Okay, y'all, that's all I got. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week.